welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my five favorite books that I have read this year so far. So these are definitely contenders to be within my top five for the year. Of course, we still have another six months to go, but I wanted to tell you kind of the really good books that I have read this year that I've really enjoyed so far. So without further ado, let's just get right on into it. And um, these are in no particular order, by the way, but the first book that we're going to talk about is a book that I listened to on audiobook, um, and that is called Beneath the Stairs by Jennifer Fawcett. Few in sleepy Sumner's mills have stumbled across the octagon house hidden deep in the woods. Even fewer are brave enough to trespass. A man had killed his wife and two young daughters there. A shocking, gruesome crime that the sleepy upstate New York town tried to bury. One summer night, an, em an emboldened 14-year-old Claire and her best friend Abby ventured into the Octagon House. Claire came out, but a piece of Abby never did. Twenty years later, an adult Claire receives word that Abby has attempted suicide at the Octagon House and now lies in a coma. With little to lose and still grieving after personal tragedy, Claire returns to her roots to uncover the darkness responsible for Abby's accident. So this one is kind of in between a thriller and a horror. I really, really enjoyed it. So we have all the elements of horror. We have the spooky haunted house, but then we also have some thriller aspects as well, where there's a mystery there. There's a murder that had happened there. There's questions as to whether or not the person that has been held responsible for this murder actually is responsible or not. And then we have the fact that this house continues to lure people back to it. Um, Abby feels drawn to the house and so does Claire. They have dreams about it and we're talking about 20 years later after this experience that they've had there. They have dreams about it and they just kind of feel drawn to it for some reason. And if this book also goes back in time a little bit, we have a perspective um, from the early 1900s. We have a perspective there and a situation that's going on there. Um, and then we have, so it's kind of like three different perspectives or three different timelines, I guess I should say. We have a situation, like I said, in the early 1900s. Then we hear about what has happened with Abby and Claire when they were teenagers. And then we also have them in present day in their very early 30s. And we hear that perspective as well. So there's three different timelines to follow. Um, and I really, really enjoyed this one. I gave it a five stars. I gave it five out of five. And I just like that there were so many different um, stories that kind of all interconnected. So there were so many different elements to the story. Like I said, we had the, the horror element and the thriller element and kind of different different stories going on with each within each of those three timelines. Um, but they all ended up matching up seamlessly at the end. All the loose ends were tied up really well, I found, and I really recommend this book to you guys. The next book we're going to talk about is Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson, and um, this one I've actually had on my TBR for a long time. I picked this up at a, I think it was a garage sale <laughs> a few years ago, and I finally got around to reading it, and I'm so happy that I finally did. So they had turned this book into a movie, which... I can see why because it has a really great storyline um, but basically we follow our protagonist whose name is Christine and she has a kind of amnesia that is very very unique her case is unlike any others really <laughs> that that has ever been found um, she was in a horrific accident I guess we'll call it an accident um, yeah and um, I guess it's not even really an accident it was just a horrific situation we'll say she was attacked um, and because of it, she suffers from this rare case of amnesia where every night when she goes to bed, she wakes up in the morning and doesn't remember anything. So she sometimes will remember like from her childhood back, but she can't remember anything forward from that. But most times she wakes up and she's like in her early twenties, whereas now she's in her forties. So all of those like 20 years are just lost to her every single morning. And so the story starts out with her waking up not realizing where she is and she goes into the bathroom and she sees pictures of herself with this man that she has awoken next to which she's freaked out by <laughs> um but and there's a little note written to herself saying that man is your husband and you're 47 years old and whatever and she just every single morning wakes up in a panic she doesn't know where she is who she is she thinks she's still in her 20s but she's in her 40s um, and her husband has to kind of tell her every morning what has happened to her and this is your life, I'm your husband. She doesn't even remember marrying her husband and nothing. Um, but within this, there starts to be a kind of a secret that unfolds. 
Um, she has been, she ends up going to therapy and she kind of starts keeping this journal to kind of try and keep track of her day. She's trying to improve her memory. She's trying to get to cure herself of, you know, whatever has happened to her. And she starts to kind of notice some red flags when every morning she reads this journal back, she's starting to notice red flags about her husband. And she has to kind of start questioning some things and whether or not he's really telling her the truth and whether or not he is really who he says he is. So this is kind of a slow burn thriller, but not so slow in the fact that it's boring. Not at any part is it boring. And you'd think it kind of would be because for a lot of the book we wake up like and she wakes up and she doesn't know what's going on. And like every day this repeats itself, right? But it's written in such a way that it's not... Um, the same same information isn't relayed to us over a thousand times over and over again we still get new information every morning when she wakes up but we're still also being told that you know she doesn't understand what's going on so I really like the way that this was written I really liked the mystery in it I did figure out the twist about mm, halfway through I kind of started wondering and I was correct within my t within the twist um, so I will say that like if you are an advanced thriller reader, you might be able to figure this one out if you're kind of like newer into thriller and haven't really read that many yet, then you maybe you won't figure it out. But nonetheless, I still really enjoyed it and I rated it five out of five. So next, of course, is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky and I have talked about this book <laughs> at nauseum probably by now on my channel and how much I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so we follow Christopher, who is, I think, an eight-year-old boy, nine-year-old boy. Actually, maybe he's 10. I can't really remember. But in any case, eight to 10, around there somewhere. <laughs> and he and his mother um, have started out a new life. So she is trying to flee an extremely abusive relationship. And she takes her son, and they go and move to this small town, and they kind of start over. Now, Christopher kind of has some issues in school. He suffers with dyslexia and he just is kind of having a rough time. He's kind of part of the loser crowd and he just has a few really close friends that, um, that he is friends with and kind of sticks together with. And, um, but in any case, one day Christopher ends up going missing. So he ends up walking into these woods that his mother has forbidden him to go into and he's gone for a week. After a week, he just, walks himself back out of these woods but he comes back completely different and you know at first we're not really sure what's going on we're not sure if he has been you know attacked if he has been kidnapped um if something paranormal has happened if he's been possessed like we're really not sure what is going on with this and there is a couple twists that end up happening um, so I would definitely say this is a thriller book. It has some paranormal aspects to it. Um, and also there's talk of like different timelines intersecting, um, different dimensions, that sort of thing. In a lot of ways, it kind of reminded me of so Stranger Things. Um, it's set, I keep saying that it's set in the 80s, but I don't think it actually is. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be set in modern day, but it read to me like it was set in the 80s. And whenever I was reading it, I was picturing it being set in the 80s. So uh, do with that what you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely enjoyed this one. This one is really, really daunting because it is very thick. Um, and I was a little bit unsure whether I wanted to pick it up. And it's, it's just over 700 pages, but it is a quick read. I actually got through this a lot quicker than I thought I would. Um, and it just keeps you interested. It keeps you hooked all the time. You just, I never wanted to put it down. So I definitely recommend picking this one up. So the next book is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And this one is kind of a dual perspective again. So it is a historical fiction. We have part of the story that is told from the 1800s and then part of the story that is told nowadays. Um, but the synopsis says, a female apothecary secretly dispenses poisons to liberate women from the men who have wronged them setting three lives across centuries on a dangerous collision course. Rule number one, the poison must never be used to harm another woman. Rule number two, the names of the murderer and her victim must be recorded in the apothecary's register. One cold February evening in 1791, at the back of a dark London alley in a hidden apothecary shop, Nella awaits her newest customer. Once a respected healer, Nella now uses her knowledge for a darker purpose, selling well-disguised poisons to desperate women who would kill to be free of the men in their lives. 
But when her new patron turns out to be a precocious 12-year-old named Eliza Fanning, an unexpected friendship sets in motion a string of events that jeopardizes Nella's world and threatens to expose the many women whose names are written in her register. In present-day London, aspiring historian Caroline Parswell spends her 10th wedding anniversary alone, reeling from the discovery of her husband's infidelity. When she finds an old apothecary vial near the River Thames, she can't resist investigating, only to realize she is found linked to the unsolved apothecary murders that haunted London over two centuries ago. As she deepens her search, Caroline's life collides with Nella's and Eliza's in a stunning twist of fate, and not everyone will survive. So I really, really enjoyed this one as well. Like I said, it's historical fiction, but it also focuses on present day. And it's just such a strong, strong tale of womanhood, sisterhood, surviving. The book is about women supporting women and helping them because especially in those early 1700s, those years, women were not looked at as equals whatsoever. I mean, even today, we're still struggling with that, right? So I just loved how much this book really focused on sisterhood and women helping women. Uh, and it spans through how even, you know, centuries apart, these women, well, I guess these women were helping each other, even though they lived centuries apart. It's really quite amazing. Um, and it was so well written and I cried throughout this book and I laughed throughout this book and it was just very, very powerful and I highly recommend it. And the last book that we are going to talk about is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. And this is another one that I've talked about quite a bit on my booktube channel. Um, but I really enjoyed this one as well. And this one revolves around our main character, Addie LaRue, who basically for lack of better terminology makes a deal with the devil that she will never have to die until she is ready. So we follow her now when she is 300 years old and we also, you know, get to see into her past and the things that have happened to her in the past. And basically the crazy thing about this story is that of course when you make a deal with the devil nothing is quite as it seems so the devil gives her this deal but he kind of plays a trick on her and basically anyone that she walks away from can't remember her so she could be you know her mother for instance who obviously knows her if she gets up and goes to the bathroom she comes back into the room and her mother has no idea who she is so anyone if she connects with anyone she can't nobody can ever remember her so she lives a very long life but she makes zero connections because anybody she connects with forgets about her within the first 30 seconds of her leaving um so that definitely puts quite an interesting spin on things but one day she ends up trying to shoplift from this bookstore which of course would be very very easy because you can basically shoplift right in front of the shop owners because basically as soon as you just like round the corner and they don't see you for a second then they completely forget that you even exist um except for this one shop worker who she is trying to steal this book from and he remembers her he chases her out of the store and he remembers her and of course she has never had this happen in the last 300 years so we kind of follow their story together and we realize that their lives kind of intersect in more ways than one um there's kind of a hidden story there there's a twist there that i didn't see coming this is one of my favorite books i think of all time <laughs> and for a good reason if you have not picked this one up yet it is popular for a reason i highly recommend Okay, so those are the five best books of the year so far of 2022. Let me know in the comments down below which ones of the which ones that you have read and what your thoughts on them were. And uh, let me know also what your favorite books are in the comments down below. I hope you guys are having an awesome day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!